Good evening and welcome to Sun Middle Temple. We are so happy you have joined us. My name is Alba and I use she, her pronouns. This is our first October service and I'm so happy you are here. As always, this service is recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. Uh, please keep in mind that we have our ongoing contest to decorate a scary cake, as well as our upcoming movie night. Also, please submit any videos or images that you have for our holiday video by the 28th. We will open today with our opening words, which will appear on the slide behind you. Uh, feel free to listen or read along at home. We welcome you into the light of the gods and light this flame in celebration. May its brightness symbolize our connection to the gods and the natural world. May you join us in this community of faith, cherishing love and with open hearts. So as is fitting, our theme this month is death, and our reading today is an excerpt from Book 11 of the Iliad by Homer, translated by Samuel Butler. As this reading is quite long, uh, the, portion of, the portion after this will be shortened, and we will only have one reading today. So, Here, Peremides and Eurylochus held the victims, while I drew my sword and dug the trench a cubit each way. I made a drink offering to all the dead, first with honey and milk, then with wine, and thirdly with water. And I sprinkled white barley meal over the whole, praying earnestly to the poor feckless ghosts, and promising them that when I got back to Ithaca I would sacrifice a barren heifer for them, the best I had, and would load the pyre with good things. I also particularly promised that Tiresias should have a black sheep to himself, the best in all my flocks. When I had prayed sufficiently to the dead, I cut the throats of the two sheep and let the blood run into the trench, whereupon the ghosts came trooping up from Erebus, brides, young bachelors, old men worn out with toil, maids who had been crossed in love, and brave men who had been killed in battle, with their armor still smirched with blood. They came from every quarter and flitted around the trench with a strange kind of screaming sound that made me turn pale with fear. When I saw them coming, I told the men to be quick and flay the carcasses of the two dead sheep and make burnt offerings of them, and at the same time to repeat prayers to Hades and Persephone. But I sat where I was with my sword drawn and would not let the poor feckless ghost come near the blood till Tiresias should have answered my question. The first ghost that came was that of my comrade Elpnor, for he had not yet been lain beneath the earth, but we had left his body unwaked and unburied in Circe's house, for we had had too much else to do. I was very sorry for him, and cried when I saw him. Elpinor, said I, how did you come down here into this gloom and darkness? You have got here on foot quicker than I have with my ship. Sir, he answered with a groan, it was all bad luck and my own unspeakable drunkenness. I was lying asleep on top of Circe's house and never thought of coming down again by the great staircase, but fell right off the roof and broke my neck, so my soul came down to the house of Hades. And now I beseech you by all those whom you have left behind you, though they are not here, by your wife, by the father who brought you up, when you were a child, and by Telemachus, who is the one hope of your house, do what I shall ask you. I know that when you leave this limbo, you will again hold your ship for the Aeon island. Do not go thence leaving me unawaked and unburied behind you, or may I may bring heaven's anger upon you, but burn me with whatever armor I have, Build a barrow for me on the seashore that may tell people in days to come what a poor unlucky fellow I was, and plant over my grave the oar I used to row with when I was alive and with my messmates. And I said, my poor fellow, I will do all that you have asked of me. Thus then did we sit and hold sad talk with one another, I on the one side of the trench with my sword held over the blood, and the ghost of my comrade saying all this to me from the other side. Then came the ghost of my dead mother Anticlea, daughter to Autolycus. I had left her alive when I set out for Troy, and was moved to tears when I saw her. But even so, for all my sorrow, I would not have let her come near the blood till I had asked my questions of Tiresias. 
Then came also the ghost of Theban Tiresias with his golden scepter in his hand. He knew me and said, Ulysses, noble son of Laertes, why, poor man, have you left the light of day and come down to visit the dead in this sad place? Stand back from the trench and withdraw your sword so that I may drink the blood and answer your questions truly. So I drew back and sheathed my sword, whereon when he had drank the of the blood he began with his prophecy you want to know he said about your return home but heaven will make this hard for you i do not think you will escape the eye of neptune who still nurses his bitter grudge against you for having blinded his son still after much suffering you may get home if you can restrain yourself and your companions when your ship reaches the Thrinassian island where you will find the sheep and cattle belonging to the sun, who sees and gives ear to everything. If you leave these flocks unharmed and think nothing but of getting home, you may yet after much hardship reach Ithaca. But if you harm them, then I forewarn you of the destruction both of your ship and of your men." Even though you may yourself escape, you will return in bad plight after losing all your men in another man's ship, and you will find trouble in your house, which will be overrun by high-handed people who are devouring your substance under the pretext of paying court and making presents to your wife. When you get home, you will take your revenge on these suitors, and after you have killed them by force or fraud in your own house, you must take a well-made oar and carry it on and on, till you come to a country where the people have never heard of the sea and do not even mix salt with their food, nor do they know anything about ships and oars that are as the wings of, ship, of a ship. I will give you this certain token, which cannot escape your notice. A wayfarer will meet you, and will say it must be a winnowing shovel that you have got upon your shoulder. On this you must fix the oar in the ground and sacrifice a ram, a bull, and a boar to Neptune. Then go home and offer hecatombs to all the gods in heaven, one after the other. As for yourself, death shall come to you from the sea, and your life shall ebb away very gently when you are full of years and peace of mind, and your people shall bless you. All that I have said will come true. This I answered, must be as it may please heaven but tell me and tell me and tell me true i see my poor mother's ghost close to us she is sitting by the blood without saying a word and though i am her own son she does not remember me and speak to me tell me sir how can i make her know me that he said i can soon do any ghost that you let taste of the blood will talk with you like a reasonable being but if you do not let them have any blood, they will go away again. On this, the ghost of Tiresias went back to the house of Hades, for his prophesyings had now been spoken. But I sat still where I was until my mother came up and tasted the blood. Then she knew me at once and spoke fondly to me, saying, My son, how did you come down to this abode of darkness while you are still alive? It is a hard thing for the living to see these places, for between us and them there are great and terrible waters, and there is Oceanus, which no man can cross on foot, but he must have a good ship to take him. Are you all this time trying to find your way back home from Troy, and have you never yet got back to Ithaca, nor seen your wife in your own house? Mother, said I, I was forced to come here to consult the ghost of Theban prophet Tiresias. I have never been near the Achaean land, nor set foot on my native country, and I have had nothing but one long series of misfortunes from the very first day I set out with Agamemnon for Ilius, the land of noble steeds, to fight the Trojan. But tell me, and tell me true, in what way did you die did you have a long illness or did heaven vouchsafe you a gentle and easy passage to eternity tell me also about my father and the sum whom i left behind is my property still in their hands or has someone else got hold of it who thinks i shall not return to claim it tell me again what my wife intends doing and in what mind she is does she live with my son and guard my estate securely, or has she made the best match she could and married again? 
My mother answered, Your wife still remains in your house, but she is in great distress of mind and spends her whole time in tears both night and day. No one as yet has got possession of your fine property, and Telemachus still holds your lands undisturbed. He has to entertain largely, as of course he must, considering his position as a magistrate, and how everyone invites him. Your father remains at his old place in the country, and never goes near the town. He has no comfortable bed nor bedding. In the winter he sleeps on the floor in front of the fire with the men, and goes about all in rags. But in summer, when the warm weather comes on again, he lies out in the vineyard on a bed of vine leaves thrown, anyhow upon the ground. He grieves continually about your never having come home, and suffers more and more as he grows older. As for my own end, it was in this wise. Heaven did not take me swiftly and painlessly in my own house, nor was I attacked by any illness such as those that generally wear people out and kill them. But my longing to know what you were doing and the force of my affection for you, this it was that was the death of me. Then I tried to find some way of embracing my poor mother's ghost. Thrice I sprang towards her and tried to clasp her in my arms, but each time she flitted from my embrace, as it were a dream or a phantom, and being touched by the quick, I said to her, my mother, why do you not stay still when I would embrace you? If we could throw our arms around one another, we might find sad comfort in the sharing of our sorrows, even in the house of Hades. Does Persephone want to lay a still further load of grief upon me by mocking me with a phantom only? My son, she answered, most ill-fated of all mankind. It is not Persephone that is beguiling you, but all people are like this when they are dead. The sinews no longer hold the flesh and bone together. These perish in the fierceness of consuming fire as soon as life has left the body, and the soul flits away as though it were a dream. Now, however, go back to the light of day as soon as you can, and know all these things that you may tell them to your wife hereafter. We can see how humanity has not changed over the thousands of years. People still miss their mothers and families after death, and still try to contact them continuously. We can also see much about the treatment of dead and sacrifices that we can use in our current practices, although many of us no longer have access to blood sacrifices. We can also learn how our ancestors uh, can currently connect with us. All the people who uh, came before us uh, died and the changing of the seasons shows that death is a natural part of life and that we should show respect uh, for the cycles of life and death. We will now move into the ritual part of the observance. If you want to, you can join us at home and read the words aloud or just listen. Uh, you are still welcome to complete uh, the ritual at home. I will be inserting a video ritual uh, in future observances. This way it will be easy for everyone to participate in view. So, we leave this offering for our gods to symbolize our connection and devotion. We gift this water to accept the flow of our lives. We gift this rock to symbolize the stability of the gods in our world. We welcome life and bless our offerings with oil to share our riches. We embrace our connection to each other and the world and celebrate our revival. So now we will do our closing words. As we move out into the world, let us remember our community of faith. Cherish love and open your heart as you walk through life. Hold dear the light of the gods and our connection with the natural world. Go forth in celebration and carry the light of connection within your heart. Good evening and welcome to Sun Middle Temple. We are